Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm working on a little notebook project and I'm hoping to just do a small brief little video. It's really hard to explain how to do this, but I thought it would be something fun to share with people who enjoy making personal notebooks. I've, I'm using my Sutter Bind It All and it was very complicated to figure out how to use, but once I learned how to use it, it was very simple and easy. And I've always wanted to learn how to make a notebook so that the cover has the rings semi-hidden, like this one is here. So it doesn't look like this where all the rings are exposed. And I've seen several blog posts on people doing this, but I could never quite follow the directions. And so, I just made, I think I've made four of these so far, and I experimented with making pocket pages and just using up old Stampin' Up! paper that I had around the house, and I made several with different spine widths and experimented with different sizes of covers, and I think I've come up with a few basic tips that could help anybody make one of these without getting into too much, uh, you know, struggle. So there's basically, I just basically have, if you've ever made a notebook before, you, you'll get the main idea. You need to make your pages and then your cover and you have to figure out your spine width and the number of O-rings and how many, you know, holes that you want to punch into your cover. For anybody that's kind of worked with this system before, I'm assuming that you already know how to do that. I'm just basically giving you um, some basic tips on how to get this hidden binding system uh, to work correctly. And a lot of it has to do with the, the width of your spine and where you put your score lines. That's where I struggled. So that's what I wanted to speak to today. Hoping that if other people were struggling, maybe this will help other people. It's, it's a super, super fun little project. So why don't I just take you through the exact measurements that I used to make mine, and then I'll explain the rationale for that after the fact. So, in order to make, so I've bought a paper pad of uh, Graphic 45 Fairy Wings, and I have these half inch O-rings, and I'm just about to finish uh, binding this. And so I just thought I would give you my measurements, and then kind of give you the rationale for how I arrived at those measurements. Um, so, the basic rule of thumb that I found in making these, these notebooks here is to add a quarter inch to the size of your O-ring. So I have a half inch O-ring and I experimented with a half inch spine and it's just too tight. So with this spine, with a half inch O-ring and a half inch spine, you can see it's just the cover doesn't want to lay down flat. There's not enough room for the O-rings to sit in there. And so I tried the half inch O-ring with a one inch spine and a one and a quarter inch spine and a half inch spine. Finally, I tried 0.75 and that was perfect. So what I'm assuming is that if you take any O-ring size and add a quarter of an inch, that will give you a good starting point to determine what the width of your spine should be. So in my case, I used a half inch O-ring, and then in order to get the spine to uh, be able to close properly, I had determined that I needed a 0.75 inch width spine. So that was the first calculation that really helps a lot. And if you test it on a piece of scrap paper like I did here, this is that I used some graphic 45 paper that I wasn't too excited about. And I was just practicing different spine widths. Here was a one and a half, and I think this was one inch, and this was 0.75. And this is when I got to the 0.75 and I stuck my little rings in there, I kind of knew, okay, that's, that's definitely going to work. So if you're not sure, definitely use practice paper and make sure that you think you're going to uh, have a good fit because it's very painful removing these from your project and it hurts. So that's my first tip. Take the 
size of your o-ring in my case a half inch add an order quarter of an inch to that and that should give you a good starting point for the width of your spine the second tip i wanted to share is when you calculate your cover size try to keep in mind that you're going to want a, at least a quarter of an inch overage outside of your page so that you will have some extra uh, area uh, around all the sides of your pages. And the reason why that's important is I'll show you here. I had overage on the outside covers here on the width, which is nice. But sorry, you grabbed the wrong one. This one where I had overage on the outside but I didn't leave any overage on the bottom. And you can see these, pa these pages do slip around inside the rings a bit, and the pages are sticking out on the bottom. And so if you add a little overage, if the pages slip a bit, they're not gonna poke through and get bent or, you know, sticking out. So that's the second main tip I wanted to say. And then the third main tip I wanted to say is how you put your uh, rings into uh, your pages. So let me take this off so you can see. Um, so this, these are all of my pages cut and punched. And this is the top page of my notebook. And you want to thread your O wires so they come from the so the prongs are thread from the bottom and they come through the top. And the reason why that's important is because if you don't do it in that so when you do it in that direction, the, you all you see are the wires, and all of the hardware stuff is hidden in the back. I learned the hard way with my other notebooks. I didn't thread it the right way and all the ugly hardware is on the front. So if I wanted to gift this, I'd have to rebind, you know, create a new cover, remove this and do it again. And so that's a lot of extra hard work. So nice tip to know, if you thread it in the right direction that I showed earlier, then all of this is hidden on the back. I, in this case, I did it on the opposite. So. You know, it looks nice and tidy here. Unfortunately, that's the back page. So, so anyways, you can learn from my mistake. Um, so those are the main uh, main three tips that I that I wanted to share on making the covers for your notebook. So why don't I actually give you the exact measurements for this notebook that I'm making here for graphic for this graphic 45 notebook? This is the one where I finally realized these half inch spines were too tight and the page doesn't want to stay closed. And so I realized, okay, it, one inch is too big. So 75, 0.75 inches is gonna be the right size spine width for a half inch O-ring. So I've got my half inch O-ring and I've prepared my cover. So it has a 0.75 inch spine. And here are the exact measurements so you can see. So here, and I, I'm giving you the exact measurements and I'm also giving you the formula. So the formula is the page width, in my case, three and three quarters inches times two. So that's 7.5 inches. Then you add a half inch for your one quarter inch overage on both ends of your width. Then you add 0.75 inches for your spine. And that's because we're using a half inch O-ring and we're adding a quarter inch, and that gives us a total width of 8.75 inches. So for the cover length, the formula is the length of your page plus a half inch, and that will give you the quarter inch overage on each side. And so that is a half, five and a half plus a half, and that equals six inches. So my spine, so my whole cover is 8.75 inches wide by six inches long. And then the next thing I thought I would walk you through is the scoring, and that's a little complicated, but I'm, I don't think it's complicated. I think I'm just having a hard time explaining it. Uh, so the easiest 
way to figure out how to put the score marks into your cover is to find the center mark from the width of your cover. So the exact center of my cover, so my the width here is 8.75 inches and the exact midpoint is four and three eighths of an inch. So I put it on my little Martha Stewart scoreboard, my mini scoreboard. And the first thing I did was, so it's harder to show you because the lamination is kind of taking up room here. So I just scored at four and three eighths of an inch. And from there, I could tell how to create my 0.75 inch total spine. So you want to make sure that half of the three quarters inch is extending from the first score mark to your right, and half of the three quarters inch is scored to the left of your middle scoring line. So in this case, I started out at four and three eighths inch, and then I scored to the left at four inches, and I scored to the right at 4.75 inches. Or if you're using fractions, four and six eighths of an inch. And then that centers the 0.75 inch spine exactly in the middle of your cover. And it's super easy. So all you have to do is work from the center outwards so that you get your finish, finished width spine. So hopefully that makes sense. So you should be able to use that formula for any spine size that you wanna use. So the final thing um, you wanna do is push, push this through your laminating machine. I did that twice. Uh, on one of the times that I laminated, a little air bubble popped up. So I thought just to be on the safe side, I'll push it through twice and then you have to rescore. You have to reburnish your fold lines with your little bone folder because it's a little hard to find them, but you can see them. And you just press down and rescore your score lines, and it, it's absolutely doable after you've, you've laminated your pages. And then, in order to punch this, once you've flattened it out at the middle score line. You bring your bind it all, um, and you you want to make sure this lever is on open, and because this can move back and forth when it's on open. And then what I did is I s inserted it there, and I took my one of my pages and used it as a template, and I folded my page in half and put little tick marks on there with a pen, and I use these tick marks as a way to center my page with the center arrow on the bind it all. So once I eyeballed this cover, so it looked like there was a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here, I, and once this tick mark was lined with the arrow, I knew that my pages would be centered in the cover. And then I pushed this forward and placed it into the lock position and then you press this down and then it will punch through all of these uh, these this two two layers of uh, lamination so then the, the final thing you do is uh, take this and put it backwards so that you have your outside facing out and then once you have all of your pages threaded with the O-rings, with the prongs facing downwards, coming out from the top, then you're going to put these through, Let's see if I can do this. You're gonna put these th uh, prongs through your uh, cover just like this so it's laying flat and then this zutter this little knob will uh, you can adjust it so that this bar is flush with the size of your o-ring so I have it set exactly where the um, sorry I'm gonna move it right up into the half inch 
uh, mark and then make sure your rings are try to get your pages even as much as possible they're gonna slip around a bit doesn't have to be perfect make sure everything you know is ready to go and then you just stick it down in there so the rings are touching the floor of the machine and then you just gently push in and then I don't want to over push it so I I kind of err on the side of going easy rather than boom because sometimes these wires can kind of flatten instead of stay round so I've noticed what some people do is they move it a little bit and then push again just gently 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 and then now I feel like okay the prong is almost touching this maybe I could go just a wee bit more and that's about right almost too tight we'll see <laughs> I hate having to redo this but this is where the proof of the whole project will uh, so this is the proof of concept right here. So here we have the front page and the ugly side of the rings are hidden in the back. And we have some overage uh, on all sides. So the pages, the pages are, they can slip out, but it's a lot better than what it was having no overage. If I go like this, you can kind of see, it kind of looks like that. And, you know, there's really, there's good protection there. And then the rings are somewhat hidden. And now the spine has a little bit more room for the O-rings. So this is the spine at 0.75 inches. And that's in comparison to this spine that's at a half inch. And so the first thing I noticed after pulling this out is it does want to lift up still. So the one thing that you can do is put a heavy book on this. Like I put one of these punches and I had it sitting on top of the, uh, the notebook overnight and it tended to start to relax quite a bit. So after I did this one, it it was like popping out like that and overnight it kind of went down to about like that. So I can see from doing this that it's still going to pop a bit. So we'll see after I let it uh, kind of, uh, you have to remember when you have, to, when you're putting these folders on, you have to start by putting them on backwards. So you kind of have to retrain the laminated pages so that they will go back to sticking down again. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like once we open it up. Uh, it feels like with the 0.75 inch spine, there's definitely a lot more room for the pages to flip. And then if I go back to the half inch spine, there's a lot less room for the pages to flip, but they're flipping fine. But see, see, I'm getting a little stuck here, a little stuck there. So I'm definitely glad that I went for the 0.75 inch spine. So I was thinking I've got like, I don't know, maybe a half a dozen Graphic 45 paper pads in the house. I'm never going to use them to make these very time consuming handmade photo albums that I used to really like to stare at videos for how to make those. This felt more doable for me. It felt like it was more within my reach, something I could do like in an hour and maybe two hours max. If I would say it takes about an hour and a half maybe to prepare your pages, depending on how complicated you want to make them. In this case, I, uh, I took the little cuttables or cutaways and I punched them as well. I was trying to go for that whole smash book junk journal uh, thing that people are really into. For this one, it was like a little, I don't know what you call these, the biggest cuttables. And I took the smallest one and this comes in and out. 
So I'm sure there are people out there that would spend a whole week on this. I just, I don't have the patience to do that. But uh, I just tried to uh, put little things in here to kind of mix it up and make it fun and kind of have the paper kind of work together and you can kind of see, I really love that right there. It's kind of kind of sad covering up these pages in a way it, on some of the, but that's the neat thing about this. Like there's enough plain pages where you could put recipes or, um, you know, just do journaling. Um, I'm not quite sure how you would turn this into a journaling book, but I was thinking washi tape uh, you could use to attach notebook pages to or any kind of writing page and then remove that and then start off with another page so you can reuse the page, which is an interesting thought that I had. So anyways, um, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope I've given you some inspiration with the holidays coming up. Uh, I thought this would make a fun teacher's gift or a gift to give to someone special in your life. Um, something that you can gift that you enjoy making and giving and the recipient enjoys receiving. Or just make it for yourself because who doesn't need a nice pretty notebook with paper that is so much more beautiful than what you would get from the office supply store. So anyways, thank you so much, you guys. Um, oh, I was gonna sh share one final thing. Uh, the inspiration for the page size on this notebook. So Sizzix had come out with a uh, cute little video of a mini album from Linda Canas, and they were using Caitlin Lazardi's uh, envelope flap insert dies to make a faux uh, envelope insert page. And I love that idea so much that I, I just thought, wouldn't that be pretty to make as one of my pages with some plain colored paper? So I went to the Sizzix website and I looked at the Linda Canas album die and her pages are five and a half by three and three quarter. And so that's how I started out with this page size. I didn't end up using the, the uh, envelope uh, flap because it's very difficult to figure out how to attach and there was no tutorial on how to do that. The only way I could see how you could do it is if you have to cut down the envelope flap and leave a little uh, um, flap without, with the, the decorative edge trimmed off and glue it to the back side or the inside here. And if you glue it to the back side, it's not very attractive. And if you glue it to the inside, uh, it doesn't, it's like an envelope that doesn't move. <laughs> it's like you'd have to glue it down or I don't know, maybe it could stay hidden. Maybe I'll use it one day, I'm not sure. Anyways, that's how I arrived at that page for my papers. And they must have thought this through very well because it turned out to be a very convenient size. I got about 35 pages out of a 12 by 12 graphic 45 uh, paper pad and used up the entire pad except for three pages. So. For a half inch uh, O-ring uh, personal size notebook, it very efficiently uses one 12 by 12 pad of paper. So that's the final thing I thought I would mention. So anyways, I've talked too much already. So sorry for making this so long. I hope that some people get some, some good use out of these tips and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your summer. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.